Welcome to uh, Watercolor Studio uh, 42, and uh, today we're going to do something a little bit more uh, towards seasonal and uh, somewhat floral. Uh, before I get started, though, I just want to uh, kind of give you a, a few little, uh, I guess, uh, sketching or drawing lessons and here, talk about it a little bit. Uh, at one time, I had a problem with holly. Uh, the, the little holly plant, and so um, what, what I was doing wrong, uh, and I'll show you uh, here, is that uh, when I was sketching it out, uh, I couldn't figure out, this is when I was quite a bit younger, but uh, I was doing the holly like this. I was making the bumps go this way, okay? I was doing this. And I was wondering what was happening. This would have been a good way to make, you know, and then you put the little stem. Well, there was something wrong about that. And what I was doing was making the bumps bump out instead of going in. Now, if I, uh, finally I realized what was happening. So now, Holly is like this. It goes in. Everything goes in. Like this whatever you do around it and then you put side of the spine and so forth in there. Now that's more like holly. See, it's not bumpy. It's not the bumps on the out, outside. It's do, going in, looping in with the uh, the ho holly uh, uh, leaves. And uh, I don't know if you've ever had a holly plants and so forth. They kind of spread and fill out. And if you try to trim them sometime, make sure you have good gloves on because those uh, those little, little uh, I guess I, I call them like a leaf on the holly is uh, pretty pretty picky. It sticks, it scratchy, sticks into your shop. So anyways, now um, another thing too, uh, when I do a rose, uh, and, and I'm going to be working from this particular photograph today. Uh, 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 the rose is sort of like a spiral. So if, if this is a fast way to do a rose, you start wherever you want it to be located, but then you just do spirals and make sure that the spiral uh, kind of bumps out like this. You keep building around and it spirals around. Sometimes the outside leaf's a little bit larger. So basically, this is your spiral. This is what you're gonna be doing, just working around. And uh, spiral, of course, is that when you do something like that. You, know, you think of this as being a, a spiral. But make sure when you do the, uh, the a rose that you make it the petal bump out and touch uh, as it goes around. But you're moving uh, in a spiral direction uh, around to make the rose shape. And then uh, other plants, other things that you put in, basically they have a center and the, and the leaves just go out from the center. Something like that, okay? Yeah, that, you're looking at the picture and then it has some little things that grow out in the middle. So, you know, similar to uh, like a Easter lily, uh, lily plants. Um, but uh, so th those are some of the, the w simple ways to, you know to be able to draw. So the holly, everything loops in, and uh, the uh, rose is more of a spiral, bumpy spiral with the petals around, moving around. And then the other types of flowers are more like you know f fanning out from the center, like the s spokes in an umbrella type of thing. Uh, all right, so that's talking about a little bit of the drawing part. Now, um, what I'm going to be doing here, using a little bit uh, smaller piece of paper today, cut down a little bit uh, more you know, rectangular, and I'm just going to put that down, and uh, I'm going to start my drawing. Now, a simple way, if you don't have a real flower, you can take a, a, a piece of uh, tissue paper or uh, colored tissue you, know, you use for wrapping and stuff, and you can use that or you can use a paper towel and just crumple it up. 
And what happens is you crumple it up. It kind of kind of opens up a little bit, but you get sort of like a, uh, the uh, the idea of the the leaves, like uh, with a carnation flower type of thing. Uh, and then then you set that down on the table, and uh, and and you look at where the shadows are in here. There's a lot of little shadows in and about and uh, you get kind of an interesting contour of, of the outside sh shape of the uh, 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 tissue in this case, but the flower, it's like a flower shape. And it's a good way to copy to practice doing petals and stuff for flowers. So th those are just some, some ideas that uh, I, t I toss out. If you need something like flowers, just crumple up pieces of paper sometimes, ball of paper, let it pop, open up a little bit and then copy what you see. You put a stem on it and some leaves and you got a flower. So that's that. Now, um, I'm gonna start off, I usually start off with a pencil. It's a regular 2B pencil. And uh, I, I look at the uh, photographs that I'm working from. I try to do at least three, three flowers in there, uh, five, uh, uh, sort of an uneven number. Uh, sometimes I don't always copy the uh, the arrangement uh, in the photograph. I rearrange the flowers differently, or just enlarge uh, the flowers, or do fewer of. Uh, sometimes you can get your picture so it gets a little bit too crowded. But uh, the star, uh, the stars that jump out in this picture, you know. Uh, mostly the the uh, roses, the red roses. They're a little bit on the dark side. I, I probably, when I paint it in, I'll make them a little bit lighter and whatnot. Uh, so, now, I have to know where the center is of the paper. So I'm gonna sort of work off center. And usually I kind of have the uh, the arrangement sort of flow. It moves through a little bit. You can start off, in this case, it's, it's like an S shape, a large, uh, like, uh, sort of an S shape. So the location of the flowers, I'm gonna put a, a right in here, it's gonna be a, a flower. Then there's another uh, a white flower that breaks up in there. And then I can put another something over here, another red rose maybe up in there, and something off here. So what we have is sort of like a flow, a movement, like an S shape um, on the paper. What you don't want to do is stack it. You know, you don't want to make it look like cans on a, on a grocery shelf. So what we do is kind of relax. Now, as far as the sketch goes, I'm going to put do do the row shape, and that's you can start like a tight spiral, and just move that pencil around. You can you can follow pretty much the uh, the picture if you want, and uh, the photograph, and and work that way. Now, how large you want this flower to be, it can occupy quite a quite a large area of the paper. Okay, let's move up into here. This is the other type of flower, and I'm just going to kind of make a, a rough contour of that, kind of flowing around in through here. And I might not put as many flowers as they have in the picture. They've got quite a few in there, about seven. But I'm going to keep it a little bit down a bit. And that's going to be something that off over in, in this area. Okay? So that's going to be one, two... Uh, then the, another rose over here, spiral, just go bumping around, move, moving in a spiral shape. And then you, you can have a little bit of something white, maybe up in this area, okay? Now what we're going to be doing is filling in most all around with some green. And if you can sneak in some holly and, or, or some other little uh, bushy plant or something, f piece of fur, fern or something, you can uh, put that in. So that's going to be something bushy in, into here, a little bit into here, um, maybe something coming out back here, and a little bit over in this corner. So 
that's that's how that's that will kind of pull things together a little bit for you, but um, uh, it doesn't have to be fussy. It doesn't have to be as fussy. If you if you sketch something kind of free and looser, then what's going to happen is that you you're going to paint it that way, and it, it may it may come out better or whatever whatever happens. Uh, you know, let's do a little bit. That's going to be some green in there. Sometimes I put a little uh, the, the uh, letter you know, G in there if it's green, R where the red's going to be uh, for red, and uh, the white is W. Put a little white uh, W is in there where you want to leave it white. Okay, so that's that's the sketch. How long did it take to do that? A matter of seconds. Uh, to just to do that a little roughing in. Now, um, this is another thing. Usually when I paint, um, I try to do the background first. I build from the back to, f to the front. So in this case, um, believe it or not, I'm going to be actually starting with some of the green and putting in some of the shading uh, on where the area might, might leave it just the white of the paper. I could do that and uh, go from there. And I'm not going to get as busy, busy, I hope, as this would be. I, I'm going to keep it a little bit uh, simpler than that. And uh, I usually start with uh, a larger brush, um, sometimes the largest brush I may have. And um, somewhere there's one hiding here. I could use this one inch flat across the bottom, a flat brush. And I'm just going to put a little bit of a uh, shading in there uh, uh, on the uh, on the plant where the flowers are. And also, uh, we're going to put in, indicate where the green's going to go. So why don't we do that first? I'll just put some where the green's going to be. And I'm using, like I said, one inch. You now, if you want to make it uh, narrow, just turn the brush and use it paint narrow on the narrow side okay here we go I'm going to start with a little bit of the sap green we'll put some of that over here now I, I'm going to put a little bit of green up in this corner and I'm going to have to put a little bit over into here distribution of that color and I'm going to put uh, let's see a little wedge uh, I, what I see on the paper there I'll put something in there just to remind myself and then um, a little bit down in here I try to make the corners look a little bit different paint that in there now that's that's really a lighter shade of gr a green uh, than what the picture is but uh, like I always say it's easier to go darker than to go too dark and then have to lift it out or erase it and uh, uh, white it out and paint over it to make it lighter. So I start uh, with just a, uh, a large brush and just wiggle around and get some of, some of the green in there. Okay. Yeah, I think we got some over in this corner a little bit coming down this way. All right. I paint right to the corner if you can. Here we go. Paint right to the edge. Pull, pull it right out to the edge. Same way with this corner over here. And just, you know, like I said, use a larger brush for the a lot of times for the background, and uh, go from there. Um, now, um, where else? Okay, I don't know. Um, of course, I'm going to go a little deeper with the green. Uh, I'll let that set up, and then uh, I can always come back in and hit it almost straight without too much wa water on the brush. And I can always go a little darker with the green. That's not a problem. Okay, probably use a different brush for that. A little smaller brush. But you can see how you, you can see how you can build up the greens. You know, the, the, the uh, background. Okay, now um, right. You can go to the edge. Uh, then oh, this this is going to be coming down in here a little bit more, and that can go off the paper. 
a little bit of, break this up over in here um, what not it, you can go that route and go right it right into the corner right to the edge okay so you can, you can see how you can keep building build up the green okay keep building that up all right <coughs> excuse me uh, now let me just touch in here a little bit. Now, if you think there's too much paint in there, just lift it out with a brush because some of those puddles, it takes a while to dry and we don't have a good deal of time to let things dry out as, as, as long as it would take. So sometimes I have to take, lift some of the puddles out. Okay, so I'm going to, leave that for a couple of seconds and, and I'm going to come back now uh, where the uh, the white might be I'm going to take I could still use this brush as long as I get some of the green out of it and uh, pitch it out with a paper towel might as well use this when I demonstrate it for texture for, for leaves um, and uh, we'll see what else we can do uh, I've got a Payne's gray I'm going to mix a little bit of that over in the palette. That's, I keep that DAC color down at the bottom. And in, in the, where the white flower is, it, it has a lot of uh, shadow in there. So let's just add some brush strokes of sh some gray in there. It doesn't have to be very dark, very light gray. And uh, let's see what we got here. Just kind of dabble around in places. It kind of reminds you to where to keep the white. Keep the white. Some out in the here. I'm going to make that a little bit darker in there. Okay. With that uh, gray color. Oops. Maybe that's a little bit too much. Okay. You can always water it down. Oh, gosh, I'm getting green. That's all right. We'll just leave that. We'll leave that the way it is. I, I wanted that to be darker anyways. So I gotta turn this around here. Get to my, where my gray is here. Okay, where was I? Oh, in here, yeah. Let's do some of that. There we go. Put some of that in there. I'm still getting some green in there. All right, that's that's okay. Now, um, see what we got here. Well, I get uh, oh over in here. Let's put a little bit of that gray in here. I, you can still use that big brush. Just make sure it doesn't have some of the other color still in it. Of course, some of the shading in here looks sort of a greenish gray anyway, so you can see what that does. I just dabble around a little bit, not too much. Don't want to make it too complicated here. Let me clean that up a little bit more. Maybe a little bit more out into here. Maybe a little bit darker up up here. That can go out off the, uh, off the page. So what we're doing is just dropping some shadow in it here and whatnot. Now, um, you, you can always add more. You can always put more in, more texture, darker color, whatever you want to do. But uh, a lot of times uh, I'll start off and I'll, I'll probably try to do less. Keep that in mind, do less of and because you can always add a little touch up here and there. But uh, some of the things that we don't want to do a lot of times is to, to, to get too, too uh, busy. Then we kind of lose it a little bit. So I'm just going to let that relax for a while. Now, um, I can use a smaller brush. It might be still, um, it might be still a flat brush that you can still use. If I can find one in here, I I always have bring a lot of extra brushes. I probably only use two or three brushes when I paint, but I have a whole pile of brushes that I have in in the 
in the bag. And uh, maybe if I didn't bring so many brushes around, I wouldn't have to pick to it, find what I'm looking for. Here we go, just a small one. It's still flat, it's still a flat brush, but it's only a half inch instead of being an inch wide. Okay, so that's gonna be, we can start doing some uh, flowers. Now, I can wet the paper, I can wet this a little bit in here, where the uh, red's gonna be, and that will kind of keep it, keep it loose. I'm just using water from my water bucket here and just keep it a little bit looser when you, when you apply the brush coat. Okay, we're gonna have a little bit of uh, red up in here. Okay, just, just drop it in. There's one, one thing you have to get used to uh, with watercolor. You can't, get, you can't really get too uptight with it. Um, you, you have to get used to just uh, um, uh, looking at uh, looking at what you're trying to do, and then uh, just just put some color into it. But don't spend too much time trying to be too fussy. I think that's uh, with watercolor. You have to learn to get uh, more spontaneous with it, but not as fussy with it. Unless you're going to be really like. Uh, really fussy, you know, like some painters, they paint very, very realistic. The work looks like a photograph. Well, that's tighter. That's a, that's a little bit of a tighter going. Let's, let's start adding a little bit more red now in, in places. You can wiggle around in there. And I, I'm just using some of that, uh, actually it's a uh, alizarin crimson. And I'm using, it has a little bit of blue in the in it. And I'm going to probably keep, the flowers will never get as dark as the photograph. Photograph's pretty dark in through there. Hard to tell what's going on. Now, you notice that I move around. Um, when I paint, I'm not painting just one spot. I'm kind of moving around. Uh, with the uh, the paint spreading around. If you get some puddles in there, you, 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 you don't have a lot of time to let it dry, like I mentioned a little bit earlier. So sometimes if there's a puddle, I just pull some of the water out of the puddle and kind of uh, relocate it somewhere else. Okay, you can see now we're into sort of a pinkish color. Now, I have to be careful when I hold this up because it is watercolor and it does run. And if it runs in the wrong places, you have to blot it in a hurry so you don't want that color to be in, in the wrong spot. Okay, it's a, it's a matter of just building up now. Moving around, building up the color. And uh, like I said, this is a, a lizard crimson. They call it uh, a quinacridone rose, but um, Sometimes when you look at the spelling, it's hard to pronounce it. So if, if you ask uh, or look at the tube, it says alizarin crimson, that is quinacridone rose. It's the same mix of color. But some, some companies, they, they want to use a different terminology and they want you to think it's, it might be a different color, but it's not. It is what it is. It is what it is. Okay, now you can see how I'm just kind of puttering around here, building up things. You can go, keep getting a little darker in areas, you know, move it around. And uh, you don't want to make it look like um, a, a dot or a, a puddle, so that's why you have to kind of pull that around, kind of where the shape of the petal might be, and keep building that up. Okay, there we are. Now, let's see what else we have to do. Oh, I, I think I was going to put something up in here. I think uh, one, two, two. How about something that's a little bit pink in there? Maybe a, a little a a bud or a blossom or something up in that area. So I have three of something. But see, see I have sort of a, like a, a little S movement in there flow, let it flow. 
Okay. There we are. I was almost going to lift it up, but it's kind of wet and it, it was run. Sometimes you could paint, like put a, a board underneath and uh, kind of have your artwork tilt a little bit. But you don't want it to tilt too much because everything gravitates down. You can see, just turning it around now, see, see that, that loose water, see how it will run and gravitate a little bit in, in, down towards the edge. So you, you might not want to go that far, so pull, pull those little puddles back up into the center. Okay, here we go. Now, I can sit back and let some of this color absorb into the paper and dry a little bit more because what, what's happening now is I'm letting, um, I'm, I'm just get wetting it, wet in the wet, in the wet. Oh, it's never going to dry out if I keep wetting it. So I've got to kind of ease off a little bit and see what else I can do. Um, if some of the green has dried, I can start working that. And sometimes I use a, like a rigger. It's a very thin brush and uh, it, they go from number one, two, three, four. Well, if you buy number one rigger, it, it's only kind of a couple of hairs or so, it seems like, and it's very fine, but the problem is it might be too fine and, and it doesn't show up enough. So I, I usually end up buying a number four uh, rigger. They call it a liner brush, or they can call it a, a what's the other name? Oh, a script, scripto brush. But, uh, but a rigger. Okay, so now I can go back up and come back into some of the green and put some of the, um, the texture in if it's dry enough. I don't know if it's dry enough, but to come in, uh, in out of that, uh, I can put some of that uh, linear, some of the fine lines in here into the green. Um, and uh, when I do it, I put the brush down and then just lift up. So it goes to, um, everything goes out to a point. You know, some, some lines can be wider than others. But uh, you gotta put a few things. It gets a little bit busy in through here. You can kinda put a lot of little br brush marks into that. Have it go right to the edge of your paper. If this is dry enough, sometimes you can go over it and into it and put, put some more uh, linear texture there. Something like that, whatever. Breaks it up. Where are we here? You could go different shades if you want. Um, let's do something else in here. I'll make something coming out of there. Not one thing, but maybe three things, something like that. This can be broken up in there, go, bring it out to the edge. This, this can be kind of outlined a little bit more out. Um, Whenever, how much you want to add into that. I didn't make too much uh, of the uh, texture. I could do a little bit more with the texture. And, um, but not. Now, um, I'm sort of letting, letting this dry. Letting it dry. Now, if you're really in a hurry at home, sometimes you can take a hair dryer and put the hair dryer on it. Don't put it too close because it's going to blow the painter where you don't want it to go, maybe. And so, but you can tilt it, hold it up careful, and let some of that gra uh, color gravitate around a bit when, you, when you're working. So, uh, we, we're almost getting to a point where we can kind of just finish uh, a little bit of uh, the uh, fussy work. Now this other little white plant that's in here, I might have to define that a little bit more on the edges. So I might have to take maybe a round brush, maybe a number 05 or 06 or whatever I have here. And I just might do the trick, it's got a nice point. And what I might do there 
is kind of define a little bit of the contour. I could still go back into this. If I've got some puddles, I could take some of this uh, uh, color and, and pull, pull it out and kind of spread it around a little bit. Uh, keep in mind that, you know, the petals go, come out like a spiral. Keep that in mind when, you, when, you, when you're doing this. And keep developing the uh, contour a little bit more. Um, let's see, in here it gets real dark. Right around down here, in the photograph anyways. And we can just work some of this color in. Just kind of define the contour a little bit outside. Okay, now let's go a little bit more here. Try to emphasize a little bit more of the spiral movement. Kind of bring it around, work it around. Okay, this here, let's pull some of this back out, break it up if we can. All right. You can get a little bit closer to the green, too. Bring that out. Sometimes you have to wiggle the brush around, loosen some of that paint up. It's starting to settle in there. Uh, that gets like a clump here. So let's clean that up and over here. You want to make it sort of uh, like not as busy. Don't make it so, too much texture. Just make it more of a solid more of a solid shape in there. See how this is kind of flat through here? So you kind of wiggle around. I'm going to get this out of your way and maybe get this in a different location. I don't know if you see the paper better, that, uh, what I'm doing. Now, this looks a little bit... Uh, you can always um, kind of make it a little bit darker. It's a little bit too light. You can always... And you can always push the color underneath. The, uh, the bottom shadow. Okay, we'll pull that around. Um, when this dries out, it's going to dry a lot lighter than it is right now. So keep that in mind because y y you might think, oh, I'm, I'm going uh, a little bit too... Uh, I'm, I'm making it a little bit too dark. But what, what happens is that w when this dries out, it's going to dry out quite a bit lighter. So don't be afraid to hit it a little da darker. Yeah, you, I, I let it set, let it settle in, see what it looks like after it's dried in there a bit. If you still have puddles, you might want to push the puddle around a little bit so it doesn't take, doesn't show up as much. Or, t or take longer to dry. You just come around here, wiggle the brush around. Again, th think of the spiral, how it spirals out. Okay, that looks pretty good in that part. This needs to be a little bit darker through here. Now, sometimes you can take some of that red and you can put a little bit of that um, darker Payne's gray in it. You can drop a little bit of darker shadow into that area, but you, you have to be careful that you don't overdo it. Uh, see how that can get dark. So what I have to do is take that color and kind of soften the edges out of that and, and pull some of that down into the, some of the other area. If you want to keep that white in the corner, you have to be just careful, just paint in here around that and keep it spiral, keep it kind of moving around. Spread that paint around. Go up into here. I think the worst thing is to get too overworked. Um, you know, you can get a little bit too much. So sometimes what I do, I either I blot it while it's wet like this, take, take, put, uh, put the paper towel around your fingertip and just hit it in places. It, 
and you can lift some of that darker color out. You don't want to see too much of that. Take some of that out of there. And, of course, you can always erase it, too. Now, if you really get into a jam sometime, and you have a color that's probably coming out too dark, you may have to white it out. I use some of my white acrylic color, my paint, and just wipe that area out, let it dry, and then just repaint over it again. This gets a little bit too much here. I just let this dry, and then, then I can paint into it a little bit more. But if I keep painting into a, a wet area, it's, uh, it's not gonna help. It's not gonna change anything too, too much. Let's come in a little bit brighter with some of this red up in here, okay. Now, the, the other thing, too, uh, if you wanted that uh, whiter flower in there to show up more, we can put a little bit more detail into that. And you can sort of gray around it a little bit more. So it just kind of shows up a little bit more. The contour around the, you know, the petal shape in there. Just go around it a little bit more. That takes a little bit longer. Uh, sometimes it might take, be a little bit, take a little bit of time. I'm just pulling some of that, some of the green out of there. And uh, so we don't see so much white. Just take some of that color. Well, I didn't want that to be, probably be repeated too much over here, so. Let's just take that, blot it out, quiet it down a bit. Okay. Let this dry. And I can come back into it and, and work some more color. I want to get a little bit darker red like I have up here. Put some more color back into this. I don't want to make it look too flat. Okay. Now, um, let's see what else we can do here. You, like I said, you might want to define a little bit more of the uh, contour of uh, the, the plant that's in here. And uh, some, some, of the, some of the little things that grow out of there. Maybe we could put some of that, some of the markings in there. Something in there. We can put something in there. Something like that. And just put some little dot, dots in there. Okay. And you can always define a, a little bit of the shape Kind of go around, see if it can work. Mostly the contour, you want to kind of bring that out a little bit more. Now, I, I never kind of make, the, uh, my paintings never look exactly like the photograph. No matter what I look at, I always <laughs> do something very various in places. You might want to do something up in here we got a little bit more of the contour. Okay, just to break this up, go to the edge. Something a little darker over here. I'm, uh, I'm not paying as much attention to the photograph. I'm just pay paying attention to what, uh, what, I, what I might need in, in my painting now. What, what, what it might need or not need. Okay. Take this a little bit more. Bring that out. So you have to just be careful. Uh, uh, I might want to put just a little bit more shading in and around here. See what we got.
No, I, I don't, I'm not crazy about that. Kind of a blur. So, let's take a piece of towel and just hit it. Lift it out a little bit. Now, worst comes to worst, I can always come back in and, and put white in there, white it out, and then go over it. But what I'm going to do is uh, kind of blot it and just come back in and just put a little bit more of the red into it. Kind of perk it up a little bit more. You can go back, use your big brush again if you want. If you want to use that, just make sure it's cleaner. And you can hit, so, some of this in here can be a little bit deeper. Oops. Yes, hit, just kind of bring out some of the, the petals. You can experiment. Um, sometimes you can take a, a scrap paper and just experiment doing petals. Sometimes, you know, what, how to bring out the color more. Okay, that's, see, you can see how that's working out. Now, um, what I may do is come back in and maybe use that smaller uh, brush again and just put in some of the um, shading. Uh, it, it, it can be a little bit darker. You can uh, kind of use uh, your green a little bit more and make that a little bit deeper in, in, on your uh, flower. Uh, I talked about making some of this look like um, holly. It doesn't have too much of a holly shape to it. So neither does that in here. You see a little bit of holly in here, but not that much. You can make this more like, uh, little sharper here, like, like a holly, you know, kind of loop in, something like that. Um, but, uh, let's see, hit it around the bottom here a little bit more. Okay. I always like the, uh, the bottom part to be a little bit stronger. The base, you know. It's not quite quite like that in the photographs. This this was a, from a calendar, I believe, and I just cropped it a bit. I do that a lot of times with some of my artwork. Um, whether you want to bring out a little bit more of the background, you can. If you see too much white in there, just, just put a little bit more green into it. You know, in a shadow in the background. Now, like I was saying earlier, I, I never try to exactly copy a photograph. Um, you can spend more time, but the problem is that I don't know whether it's going to make a, a lot of difference how much time you spend on being fussy about it. Sometimes it's better off if you can just keep your, uh, your painting a little bit looser, if you can. I might get this a little deeper here. Just a little bit more color in here. Work around that a little bit. Sometimes you have to just let it dry and then, then go come back into it again. Okay. That, that probably needs to be broken up a little bit more. Uh, what I do sometimes let it dry and then I come back with a, my rigor and kind of cut up into it and define the petals a little bit more. Okay, this looks a little bit too solid here. Kind of erase some of that. Pull that out of there. Blot it. Oops. Hit it. A little bit there. Doesn't look quite right. This looks a little bit too, a little bit kind of solid in through there when you look at it as a photograph. So we we might have to just doctor that up a little bit more. Yeah. 
a lot of times what you have to do when you're working with art, you have to sometimes sit back and let it dry a little bit before you can move on. Otherwise, uh, you're defeating your purpose. Everything kind of get, starts getting mushy and blurry. So you do have to kind of ease up a little bit uh, when, you, when you're doing it. So uh, that's what I'm doing here. We'll let that uh, maybe dry out a little bit more. And then you can come back in. Uh, you could probably use a rigger or something, or even just a thin brush. Something like th these two here. Well, there's the rigger. And uh, what you can do here is come back in and just paint around this. But while I'm doing that, see, I'm defeating my purpose because it's too wet right now, and you just mixing paint on the surface and you're not you're kind of giving it a really a stronger contrast of uh, of uh, the, uh, of paint so it doesn't doesn't come out as well okay so there's a lot of things you can do here um with, with the uh that white plant uh you can kind of define that a little bit more and uh Sometimes what I do, I take the, my pencil, and if I'm losing that shape, I can just come back in and kind of restructure it a little bit and figure out what, what, where I have to put some shadow, more shadow into it. Um, this looks kind of busy there. Uh, maybe that could be kind of simplified, broken up a little bit more and uh, around the edges too. Sometimes you put a mat on it. Use a little mat. This, this mat is a little bit uh, too, a little bit too large for the picture. So I'd have to cut a mat down to fit that a little bit better. But I, sometimes I put the mat on it just to look at it, see how it's, how it's coming along. But in here, right now, this definitely has to be broken up more. Uh, I don't know if I could show you that with a pencil or not. Uh, sometimes I use a pen or a marker, but you can see how that's got to be defined a little bit more in here. It's a little bit too flat right now, but it's also a little bit too uh, damp, so I have to let that dry. This looks pretty good. It looks a little bit more relaxed up and through here. Um, this could be a little bit more shading in there. Maybe put a little bit more of that gray in there. Maybe. Let's see if we can work something out. See what I can do with that. Put a little bit more color in there. Unless that's going to help that or not. a little bit more color in here just to get some of that white it has a lot of that white shading in there and the shadow maybe we can kind of pull that out a little bit more hide some of the white okay let's put this out of the way so it doesn't get paint on it you work some shadow in it in there maybe a little bit more you don't see that in the photograph it's just a white background but sometimes uh, if you're painting something you have to get a contrast and put some sh uh, paint towards the edge so that when you put the mat on it if it's a white mat it won't look white on white so it puts some shadow down here you know, a little bit more paint, kind of being kind of stingy with the color here. Shade, shade that in, shade this in here more. Work around that, you know, see, see how you can kind of sh shade it. See, just putting the shadow in there, hiding some of the white helps a little bit. Now, um, what I'm doing is trying to let that dry a little bit more so I can put some color back in there. Up in here, you don't want it white uh, around the edges because 
when you put a white mat on it, it's going to be white to white. So you always have to put some shading around the whole contour out here. Even though it's not in the, maybe, maybe it's not in the photograph. You have to shade that around. Um, some of that paint's gray. Put some shading in here. Shade this in down here. See how it kind of closes, it helps close it in. So you don't see so much of the white paper. Sometimes I do the background first, but it all depends. Um, if you're doing a Christmas tree, sometimes uh, uh, you're painting it, sometimes you have to put the ornaments in and then put the green around the ornament. Because sometimes if you do the uh, tree all green and then try to put the ornaments on, they kind of disappear into the, the green paint. Let's quiet this down a bit in there. Makes a difference. And that, that get kind of busy there. Okay. White. Uh, hide the white. Some of that color. Fill this in around the edges more. See how that's kind of locking it in. All right. Oops. Trying to get this to dry out a little bit more. Pull some of that color out of it. Yeah. It's dark in here, but you, you don't want it to get too dark. On, uh, 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 you know, when you when you do the painting, when you're painting here, you don't want to get it too too much. Okay, still not crazy about that either. Okay, it gets a little bit dark in here. That could stand a little bit more green in that part, maybe. A little bit too much gray. Let's see if I can get some, some green over there. Add some, get some green into that. Whoops, that's really too dark, huh? Really quite dark. And if I want that in there, lighten it up a bit. Of course, when, when you uh, let it set overnight, it dries out pretty good anyways. Uh, it's not a problem. Okay. I'm still not too happy with that area there. That's better than it was. Might have to put maybe a little bit of uh, dark in there. Sometimes, if, if for a quick touch-up, I sometimes take my marker and you, just, you put a little bit of dark into it with the marker. But markers don't work too well on uh, wet paper. See, break that up a little bit more. Right in through there. That helps. A little bit more over here. Okay. Now the only area that um, that I, I'm concerned about is getting this a little bit deeper here and showing some of the contour of the petal coming around. I don't know if I can get that. I don't know if it's dry enough. Maybe we could put a little bit more um, uh, that red back. Let's 
see what we can do. I think I'm running out of the, some of that red. I'll put a, a little bit more paint up in here. I call it red, it's actually alizarin crimson. You may want to put some of that back up in there. And it's just going to be too, too, too much. Break this up a little bit more. Kind of losing some of that, that looseness around through here. Get that a little bit more. Give that a little bit more color there. Like that one has it up in there. You can get the idea how that works, you know. But uh, right now, um, I'm probably not giving it time to dry. So I'm trying to give it some cosmetic uh, work in there. Um, but that will give you an idea how that works. So I'm running out of time today, folks. So brushes up and uh, we'll see you again next week.